Hello and welcome to Holy Redeemer. We are happy to celebrate this Mass with those of you who are here with us today and with all of those from our community who are watching at home. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. Please turn off any cell phones at this time. Our prayer responses can be found on these pew cards. Please join us for our opening hymn, number 878, Transform Us, 878. Listen to your beloved Son. Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, 
we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Shadons, uh, to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, to your descendants I give this land, from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way, stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. In our second reading today, we see that St. Paul was worried about the Christians in Philippi. He had preached the gospel in that Roman outpost for the first time and had received a, a, a really nice welcome. The community quickly became thriving and faithful. But since then, some controversies arose, controversies around doctrine and around morals, and these were causing division and strife, confusion, and difficulty within this young Christian community. And so St. Paul writes to them to plead with them to stand firm in the Lord. Because he's worried that the trials that they're facing will draw them away from God. 
In our lives, too, we face confusion and difficulty on a regular basis, right? We're surrounded by challenges that make it hard for us sometimes to be faithful to Christ and to his church. The normal, everyday behavior of the popular culture around us doesn't follow uh, the Christian pattern of self-control, self-forgetful love, self-sacrificial love, right? humility, and moral integrity. Instead, very oftentimes when we look around us, we see uh, a world that glorifies self-indulgence, um, exaggerated individualism, superficiality, and moral weakness. This is the same thing that was happening in the pagan society of Philippi 2,000 years ago. And so we too then need to be encouraged to stand firm in the Lord so that we don't get tired of doing what is right, so the world around us doesn't wear us down, so we don't get tricked into preferring the news on, on CNN or on Facebook to the good news of Jesus Christ. How did St. Paul motivate the Philippians to hold firm and be strong? Well, in this passage that we have tonight, he reminded them of their true identity. Our citizenship is in heaven, he wrote. Just as athletes have to keep the, the gold medal, the first place, in their, you know, in their mind's eye in order to endure the sacrifices necessary to, to train and prepare effectively, so we have to keep our true home in mind in order to persevere through life's trials. If we can remember that our citizenship is in heaven, then we'll be less likely to expect life on earth to perfectly satisfy all of our longings, all of our desires. And so we can avoid becoming slaves to the pleasures and the fashions of this world that can seduce us. Now this comment about the Philippians being citizens of heaven was not just a kind of a poetic flourish. Uh, St. Paul seems to have written this, um, you know, very, this, this phrase, use this phrase very deliberately. When the Roman Empire conquered Greece and Macedonia, you know, the, the Greek peninsula, they conquered the city of Philippi. And the city guards one of the few mountain passes linking Europe with Asia. Right, so all the lands to the east. And so because of its strategic location, Rome turned it into a Roman colony. And this was a special designation that some cities were given. Roman colonies were key military outposts sort of scattered throughout the empire. And Rome would populate these outposts with large parties of veteran soldiers who had served their, uh, sort of their, their full time in the military. And after doing so, they would receive the privilege of full Roman citizenship. And this would assure the loyalty of the place, of the, the colony, right? And so it allowed these colonies to become focal points of the, the system of, um, of Roman roads, right, that spread throughout the, the empire, designed to facilitate um, quick movement of reinforcements of troops, but also um, to create a very effective economy so the, the movement of goods. So the colonies were sort of like the nerve centers of the empire. They were like little fragments of Rome that were scattered around the world. The Roman citizens who governed the colonies then felt immense pride, you know, in their citizenship and would oftentimes tend to sort of stay aloof from the sort of local non-Roman customs, right? They would consider themselves to be sort of above that, better than that. Right? They would wear Roman clothes and eat Roman food. They would speak Latin. They would follow the, the Roman laws and customs and ceremonies. Right? So they, they would be very, very stubbornly Roman in the way that they lived their lives. They would never dream of letting that, that very precious identity get tarnished, get tarnished with anything local right? or anything foreign. And as long as this remained the case, the Roman Empire was very strong and vigorous and safe. This was a system that worked for a long time. And so it's in this context that Paul issues this reminder, our citizenship is in heaven. So it's kind of like he's saying, in the same way that the Roman colonists never forget that they belong to Rome, 
even though they're living very far, you know, very far away from them, you must never forget that you are citizens of heaven and your conduct must match your citizenship. Right? So here on earth, every one of us, every Christian person, family, parish, community, is meant to be a colony of heaven, faithfully defending and spreading the kingdom of Christ. And so if we can keep that in mind, we can, we can change the world instead of letting the world change us. And one reason that we're behind this sort of tradition of giving up something for Lent is to remind us of this. Right? When we purposely give up something good and pleasurable, something we enjoy, uh, during these six weeks of preparation for Easter, we're reminding ourselves that Earth is not meant to be heaven. We're reminding ourselves that we are not supposed to look for the fulfillment of all our desires here on Earth. Rather, here on Earth, we each have a job to do. We are called to live and to spread Christ's law of love, the law of self-forgetfulness, self-sacrifice, and self-giving. We each have a mission to keep our lives and our families and our, everybody in our circle of influence as close to Christ as possible, as Christ-like as possible. So we have to keep our torch of faith burning brightly in this world that can be very dark sometimes. And this won't happen automatically, right? It depends on our, our attention, on our effort, and always on our collaboration with God's grace, and with his blessing. And by giving something up for Lent, it can help us to refocus that attention, that effort, that collaboration. So today, perhaps as we are a little ways into Lent now, a uh, week and a half, we could ask ourselves if that is really the motivation behind our Lenten resolutions, you know? Am I giving up uh, wine or coffee or chocolate or, or, or TV or video games as a way to remind myself of my citizenship in heaven? That that is where my citizenship truly is, where it truly lies. You know, or am I doing it for some more kind of selfish or superficial reason? You know, because, well, I, I kind of want to, you know, just watch less TV anyway, or because I want to lose some weight, or, you know, or something like that. One way to make sure that our Lenten fast stays supernaturally motivated is to practice another long-standing spiritual tradition, and that is to give up our fast or whatever it is we, you know, are, we're sacrificing on Sundays during Lent, right? Sunday is the Lord's Day, the day of victory and resurrection. And by lifting our Lenten sacrifice on Sundays during Lent, which we can, of course, do because it's a voluntary sacrifice, right? So we can make the sacrifice, you know, uh, something that we do Monday through Saturday. But by doing this specifically on Sundays, but by being faithful to it, on the other six days of the week, we can make ourselves kind of more aware of that spiritual rhythm of the church and perhaps remind ourselves a little bit more of why, why I'm doing this, right? Something to consider, something to think about if you think that it might be helpful. As we continue with our Mass this evening, let us renew our awareness of our true citizenship and ask the Lord to lead us safely through our earthly trials and into heavenly joys. Let us now stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, 
seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God the Father, we make a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Counting on his unfailing mercy, we stand before him now with our needs. That the church will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. For the whole world, that our days may truly become the acceptable time of grace, salvation, and peace, especially in Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this season of Lent will be a time of deeper conversion for our parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick may know the healing and strength of the Lord, especially Mary Lou Barclay Bennington, sister of Susan Barclay Hunter, Barbara Kulik, Pat Krug, Frank Latanzi, Skip Mahane, father of Danielle Valentine, and grandfather of Rowan and Bob Valentine, M. Meisel, Carmen Payerl, and all those listed in the book of the ill and infirm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peaceful repose of the faithful departed, especially Connor Adams, nephew of Gary and Diana B. Hugh Davey, friend of Catherine and Gabriel Hunter. Mary Angelina Marone, and all those listed in the book of our beloved dead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, you did not spare your own son, but handed him over to us. May we always listen to him and trust that you will always give us what we need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we proclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days for your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice of his holy and venerable hands, 
And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said,
said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers, even now, of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Two announcements. Just a few more days until Holy Redeemer once again serves the Wednesday night dinner for Father Conrad and the Catholic Turks at the University of Maryland Catholic Student Center. We are still in need of donations and volunteers. You can help with cooking on March 15th, Tuesday, or serving on March 16th. Or if you can make a food donation, sign up on the parish website or through the Holy Redeemer Happenings. During Lent, we are offering additional scheduled times for you to receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation, in addition to our regularly scheduled confession times on Wednesday evenings and before the Saturday Vigil Mass. One of our priests will be available to hear confessions directly following each of the Saturday Vigil and Sunday Masses in the confessional. Adi additionally, you can contact the parish office to schedule a confession at another time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's bow your heads for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. Keep them faithful through the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing song, How Good Lord to Be Here, can be found on the card to receive the